Okay gang, let's take a look at an example where our population distribution is not approximately normal and see what happens when we bump up to the sampling distribution. So when I say your population distribution is not approximately normal, this is the version of the problem where we're not starting with something in chapter six, but how do we get to chapter seven, okay? All right, so as I read this, like always, let's see if we can spot the variable here. So now consider the properties of the sampling distribution for means when the population is quite skewed and thus very unlike a normal distribution. The winter 2015 issue of Chance Magazine gave data on the length in minutes of the overtime period for all 251 NHL league uh, or NHL playoff games between 1990 and 2013 that went into overtime. In hockey, the overtime period ends as soon as one of the teams scores a goal. The histogram of the data is given below. Describe the histogram in terms of our socks. And again, we're gonna ignore outliers for right now because I don't have the raw data. So let's talk about the shape, center, and spread of this histogram, all right? This is like a chapter two problem. But let's, let's be on the listen for what was the variable in this problem. And you hear it here, right? It says, we were talking about the length of overtime games in NHL hockey, right? So our variable, if I just write it here, our variable was overtime length, overtime game length, and the units were minutes. So in a moment, we're gonna do socks without the O, but let's just think about what's happening here, right? So this is when, um, in hockey, overtime ends as soon as one team scores a goal. So you can see that most of the teams, right, most of the games, excuse me, end within about 10 minutes, right? You can see from zero to 10 minutes, there's a good chunk of your overall um, proportion. You can see there's about 18% here, almost 30% here, 25% here. So most of your games are ending within 25, excuse me, within 10 minutes. You can see there's a very low proportion that went into 35 to 40 minutes, right? Because it's that much harder to not score on any goals in 40 minutes, right? Most of us are gonna score on, not most of us, but most of the NHL teams scored within 10 minutes. All right, so let's let's socks this up. Again, chapter two problem. All right, so if I look at it, this, this shape is definitely skewed right. All right, no way to say roughly symmetric here, and it's also not skewed left, it's skewed right. All right, so when I was talking about the center, I think it looks like the center is pretty close to 10 minutes, nine, 10 minutes as I look at it. That feels like a reasonable guess for the center. So I'm gonna say the center is around nine or 10 minutes. So that's not saying nine tenths of a minute. Let me write the phrase nine or 10 minutes. So I don't wanna be confusing there. So nine or 10 minutes. Um, I wasn't given the raw data, so I don't know the standard deviation, but I can at least talk about the spread. I'm gonna say the spread looks like it's around zero to 40 minutes. So spread looks to be around zero to 40 minutes. So that would be my socks. Again, chapter two problem. All right, so we're not starting with a chapter six problem. This is a chapter two problem, okay. I do wanna po point out that this was all of the overtime hockey games. So again, we're gonna now refer to this as our population distribution. Okay, so before we get into the sampling distribution, let's just remind ourselves of something that we learned way back in chapter two. All right, so let's say we found out that mu was really 9.841. Okay, so the average was 9.841, and I intentionally left off the units here. So 9.841 what? What are the units? Well, this would be minutes, okay? Because the average, excuse me, the units for all of your statistics are the units for your data, okay? So if I was drawing this, I would actually have labeled the units here. This would have been the x-axis. So I just wanna even beef up the graph that I ripped off of the internet, okay? So that's the balance point for the population histogram. The median is eight. And again, the units on this would also be minutes. All right, now we talked about this 
back in chapter two, but if I was just gonna draw the x-axis here, all right, so forget the, the histogram side of things, but let's just draw the x-axis and think about the mean versus the median. Okay, so if this was the x-axis, and again, this is time in minutes. The mean is here at eight. Oops, excuse me, the median is here at eight, and the mean is here at 9.841. All right, so we've got median and we've got mean. All right, so kicking back to chapter two, which I know it's been a while, but if you have a perfectly symmetric graph, the mean and the median are the same number, okay? So what did it mean, and I know I'm double using the word mean right now, but what does it, let me do, what does it say about your graph, or at least the shape of your graph, when your mean gets pulled to the right of the median? Or another way of saying that is, what does it tell us about the graph, or what are we told about the graph when the mean moves to the right of the median? And if you'll remember from chapter two, when the mean is greater than the median, that tells us that the shape is skewed right. Right. And we're seeing that in the shape, but I also just want you to see it in the statistics, just so we can remember what that, what that, um, what the numbers tell us. All right. So from our population, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the platelet sizes for those non-cardiac, um, uh, non-cardiac patients that we had in example one. So for each of the following sample sizes, 5, 10, 20, and 30, we're going to select 500 samples of size N and then we're gonna make our own sampling distributions. So what that means is that of all of these games, I'm gonna take a random sample of five, so maybe like one, two, three, four, five, whatever the random sample would be, and I'm gonna take that average over time length, that X bar, and then I'm gonna graph it, if we can see it, I know it's hard to get this all in frame, I'm gonna graph that little X bar down here. Then I'm gonna take another random sample of five games, find its X bar, and I'm gonna graph it. And I'm going to take another random sample, find an average, and graph it. And another random sample, and graph it. Another random sample, graph the average. I'm going to keep on graphing these averages until I make something called a sampling distribution. So we have got down here four sampling distributions. All right, so let's take note again, the x-axis. They all have x-bars on them now. Okay. Oops, this one, it looks like it got cut off. But that one did have an x-bar. All right. Now, What's down here on the x-axis? This is average time, and this is in minutes, right? So these all have average now in minutes. Average time, minutes, right? We're graphing averages in minutes, all right? So with that, let me actually do one more thing. These are all four sampling distributions. So this is a sampling distribution. This is a sampling distribution. All right, I can write this four times, or you can just write it once and remind yourself that you've got four different sampling distributions. So again, up top, I had the population distribution. This was all of the games. This is just graphs of the averages, all right? Graphs of the average for my sample of size five, graphs of the averages of my samples of size 10, 20, and 30. And there's 500 data points here, 500 data points here, 500, 500. And again, I ran this off of Minitab. You don't have that program, nor do you need it. All right, with that though, let's see if we can make some statements about the socks, all right, and specifically the S, the C, and the S, not the outliers as we don't have the raw data. So I wanna see what can I state, or what can I determine here about the socks? All right, so let's take a look at the shape. All right, if I look at the shape here, I would say this graph is still skewed right, okay? But, and I'm gonna scooch this down, see if I can get this in the same window. Don't know that I can. I, almost can, but go with me. I want you to think about how skewed right this graph is, and let's compare it to our population distribution. Right? This was severely skewed right. right, and when we go to our first sampling distribution, yes, it skews right, but I think you'll give me that this is not as skewed right 
as our population distribution. Right? And over here, when we went to samples of size 10, this is slightly skewed right, but it's even less so than this one. Right? This one is really starting to border on roughly symmetric and roughly symmetric. So I want us to just take note that the skewing becomes less and less severe as the sample size increases, right? So just take note that we started with something severely skewed right, and the skewing really just dropped off, even at samples or averages of size from samples of size five, really dropped off when we looked at averages from samples of size 10, and I can barely tell anything on this side. So let me go ahead and write that up. Right, so the shape became less skewed right as sample size increased. Okay. And I, I like to just write as n gets larger, that's what that up arrow means. So another way of saying that out loud is as sample size increases. All right. And I, I could almost say, all right, at when we got to n equaling 30, the graph really is starting to look approximately normal. And again, I will address in the next, on the next page when we can officially say, yes, it's approximately normal or, or no, it's not. All right, in terms of the centers, let's see where the centers of these graphs are. So if I look at the center of this graph, it's looking pretty close to 10, right? Here it looks pretty close to 10. Center here is looking pretty darn close to 10 and pretty darn close to 10. So all of these centers look to be pretty close to 10 minutes. So let me say all are pretty close to 10 minutes. And let's, let's think about that. If we go back to our population distribution, all right, if we go back to this, where was the center? It was pretty close to 10 minutes. Where was the center for our sampling distributions? Dude, pretty close to 10 minutes. So whatever we saw in the population, the center was staying about the same. All right, now let's look at the spreads of each of these things. So my initial spread was from zero to 40 minutes. Here you see it goes from about five to maybe 22. Here at like five to, I don't know, 16, five to 16, five to 15. All right, so another thing you can see is that as sample size increases, my spread got smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so as sample size increased, or I'll write as n gets larger, right? So as n got larger, spread got smaller. Right? And another phrase, we mentioned it on the page before, but it's always worth mentioning over and over again, is we love to say that variability decreases as sample size increases, or you could say it the other way, right? As sample size increases, variability decreases. So let me write this out. All right, so we love saying this in stats, right? As sample size increases, variability decreases. Okay. Or you could say it the other way. Um, you could say variability decreases as sample size increases. I don't know which way you prefer to phrase it. So you could also say variability decreases as sample size increases. All right, you're, you're saying the same thing just in a different order, but we, like I said, we love that phrase. So things that I want us to draw um, conclusions and to see patterns, especially between examples one and two. But let me, let me start with example two and then I'll, I'll, I'll remind us what we just did in example one. All right, so we had our population distribution here. And for this problem, our population distribution was very skewed right, the center was at 10 and the spread was zero to 40, okay? So let's start with just the shape as we move from population distribution to sampling distribution. So keep that population distribution in mind and let's start talking about the shape of all of our sampling distributions. So all of our sampling distributions here, all right? 
they no longer had an x-axis labeled with x. These were all averages, so we had x-bars along the x-axis. All right, what did we see about the shape? Yes, this was skewed right, but the skewing became less and less severe as sample size increased. And in fact, we couldn't really even see the right skew here anymore, all right? So that's why I said shape became less skewed right as sample size increased. And by the time we got to 30, it actually looked approximately normal. And I'm gonna give you a rule for when you can throw out the approximately normal when we get to the next page. All right, think back to the centers. All right, if we looked at the center for my population distribution, we said that the average game took about nine or 10 minutes, the average hockey overtime game, right? And what did we see with all of my sampling distributions? The centers were still around nine, 10 minutes, right? So whatever the population center was, hey, that showed up in my sampling distribution, okay. All right, the spread for our population distribution was pretty large, right? Zero to 40 minutes. And what did we see when we started looking at averages? We started to see, oops, excuse me, that one got, that one went crooked. All right, so again, population distribution was spread from zero to 40. We saw as sample size increased, our variability decreased, okay? All right, so if I start with something skewed right, as soon as I start looking at averages, the skewing becomes less and less severe. Let's contrast that with example one. So just to remind you about example one, here in example one, I started with a population that was approximately normal and all of my sampling distributions were approximately normal regardless of sample size. All right? But also on example one, my population was centered around 8.25 for that average platelet size and all of my sampling distributions were also centered around 8.25. All right, so I want you to notice things that were in common. The center stayed the same, same in example one, as example two. And the other thing they have in common was that our variability decreased, right? So here, if you look, I was spread from about six to 10.5 on the x-axis. And when we looked at our sampling distributions, all of our spreads got smaller and smaller and smaller, right? It wasn't six to 10.5 anymore. It was like seven to nine, right? Or 7.3 to 9.3. And by the time we got here, it was like 7.8 to 8.7. So as sample size increased, variability decreased. And now just looking at this, I, I wanna mention that we could have labeled this with average platelet size in micrograms. And I know MG might stand for milligrams, but we're just gonna interpret it as micrograms right now. All right, so for just one last time, well, probably not the last time, but the last time in this video, whatever the center of your population distribution, you're gonna see that center in your sampling distributions, okay? You're gonna see, regardless of what happens in your population distribution, as sample size increases, variability will decrease. Now the shape, that's up for grabs. When you start out with a normal population distribution, you get normality regardless of the sample size. When you start out, with a distribution that is not normal, right? This one was not at all normal. This was skewed right. You don't get normality right away. And we're gonna pick up when do you officially get to throw down the approximately normal um, symbol. That's coming in the next page. All right, we'll catch you on the, on the next example. Thanks guys, bye.